Hey gang, Jones here, back with another video. Today we're going to dive into some details of Grey Zone and give my opinion on why Grey Zone may look similar to Tarkov in some ways, but will differ on most things. Let's get into it. Grey Zone Warfare is a realism based tactical FPS that is PvE VP that is set in the sandbox environment of the fictional area of the Mang, which is an area based within Southeast Asia. Now you can traverse this with a squad up to four players. Now there'll be four squads of four within each faction. So in total within this area, there could potentially be 48 players at one time on the map. So for all of you gamers that have been looking to dive into tactical shooters, but didn't want the mess of PVP, this could be for you. You are part of one of three PMC factions or private military companies. Those being the Lemain Recovery Initiative, Mithra Security Systems, and Crimson Shield International. You'll be out within this world completing missions while representing these PMCs. You'll be given missions from different characters or traders, whatever you want to call them, that have various hidden motives. Do missions for them, gain XP along with gear, and possibly access to even more. Now, we do have knowledge at the current moment of three of these individuals. Gunny, Artisan, and Banshee. Now, there are said to be six in total within early access with additional characters being added over time. Now, it's not for certain if these three... Characters will be accessible as soon as you start up early access because you will progress and unlock more traders, characters, whatever you want to call them, over time. In early access, there's said to be over 150 missions, and given what we've learned from the mission Rat's Nest, which I'll show here, these missions seem to be well thought out and give options and a choice to the player. And I'll go ahead and read this mission briefing really quick. So here's the deal. It looks like those rats in sound didn't get the memo and are still scurrying around and causing trouble. It's time to put a stop to their operations. Your mission is to conduct a thorough search of the town and its outskirts and identify the hideouts used by these punks. Keep your eyes peeled for any suspicious signs or markings that might help you uncover them. The main area of interest are the town's northwest and southeast sections. Once you've identified the hideouts, investigate them discreetly. We want to gather as much information as possible before moving. Don't engage in direct confrontations unless absolutely necessary. Don't forget your primary objectives are reconnaissance and gathering intelligence. So this mission, in my opinion, gives me Ghost Recon, Wildland vibes, or Breakpoint, whichever one you've played. It's not your typical load em up, squad em up, and shoot em up type missions from various titles. As I said previously, it gives you a choice to go silent or loud, or whatever other creative way you'd like to approach it. I love the freedom of choice in games, not only the choice, but possible repercussions from not following set instructions. Now this is all speculation, but let's say if you would engage these rats, as they are called, maybe they flee and move operations someplace else, and now you're back to square one. Maybe it's a rather organized group and you lose fellow members, and now, since they're aware of your presence within the region, they've ramped up patrols closer to your FOB or FOB, making it harder to even reach the town. I believe just showing this mission alone, there could perhaps a domino effect in this game, and that gets me really excited. Now to give you a picture of the area you'll be completing these missions in, It'll be a large area. It'll be 42 square kilometers that you will use a little bird to actually go from your fob to these different landing zones. So you have to actually discover and unlock. Now to give a little perspective, the woods map on Tarkov is rather large and that map is only 1.56 square kilometers. So imagine 27 times the size of woods. So in my opinion, it's going to be a massive map. Now that we've discussed some of the details of the game and painted a small picture, I just wanted to get in why I believe Grey Zone is trying to be different than Tarkov. I know I've seen several videos titled Tarkov Killer, but I think there are two different games trying to accomplish two different things. Tarkov is without a doubt for the time being one of the only games that make you feel. Now what do I mean by that? When you win a fight, it makes you feel like you just ran through a brick wall. When you walk up to that sweet, sweet gear and feel like you're Ralphie getting his Red Rider BB gun. Now. On the other hand, it can make you feel like you just got your heart ripped out, then stepped on, then smashed with a hammer. This is because of the PvP aspect that Tarkov brings. It is for the time being unmatched any other game in my opinion. Now I believe Grey Zone will give you that feeling at times, but not always given the scope of the map and their focus on story. With Tarkov, everyone that plays it knows there's hot zones, and I'm sure there's going to be hot zones or be the same with Grey Zone, but within the scope of the map and the potential negative effects, from eliminating operators from the same PMC you represent in the future, such as possibly being kicked out of the PMC faction you represent, this warrants some discretion when pulling the trigger. Second point here, Grey Zone, just from the limited info we have, makes you think about how you want to approach different missions. This not only makes you think about your approach, but gear as well. Sure, you have this in Tarkov, but usually it's forced upon you by certain weapons and even certain gear, such as the peacekeeping and setup mission. With Grey Zone, I'm feeling that it will come down to the player choice more and more, 
and have them think of creative ways to approach missions and allow to be your own player rather than being forced down a hallway so you can get some type of check mark. Now the AI within Gray Zone are supposed to be complex and realizing when they can or cannot win a fight. There are also supposed to be AI factions that will not necessarily shoot you on sight, but maybe ask you to leave first. Now, possibly in the future, you may be able to even befriend these groups and get access to different things, or maybe they can even help you accomplish missions by going against a rival gang. We'll just have to see what the game brings. Now, with Tarkov, if you are a certain PMC or a scav, you are an auto-aggressor for any other person you see outside your squad. Scavs will instantly start hurling bullets at you as soon as they see or spot you. If you are a bear operator on Lighthouse, good luck. I feel like the relationship dynamic is eliminated with Tarkov and could have multiple different avenues with Greyzone. Now, I know that some of you at this point may have differing opinions, and I understand that completely because they're just opinions anyway. So let's have a discussion down in the comments if you agree or disagree. The final thing that I want to talk about is the difference in approach to the game. In my opinion, I feel like Greyzone will make you feel as if you're in a real breathing world with ever-changing dynamics. Since this is said to be a persistent world, and possible AI changes in behavior, you could have one server, whatever word you want to use there, be completely different than other servers or worlds. And to me, that's extremely exciting. Now, while in Tarkov, it seems that you are stuck in a relatively same atmosphere or situation every wipe. Of course, you have changes outside of the game with updates and whatnot, so I think people that enjoy a story, this will really hit home for them. I want to end on this. This is in no way a bash on Tarkov and a praise for Greyzone. I just think they approach their games differently, and that's great because if everything was the same, it would be incredibly boring. Now, I'm holding my breath that Greyzone Warfare does release in EA within Q1 as they have planned because I, for one, am excited. With that being said, I'm Jones, and I will see you all in the next one.